Okay, please go ahead. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this is the uh, Finance Committee of the Town of Amherst, and I'm calling our committee meeting to order. Um, this meeting is being held remotely uh, per many actions of the of, of the state legislature. And so um, the first order of business is to go around the room to make sure that the members of the committee uh, can hear me and be heard. Uh, Andy? I'm here. Bernie? Present. Kathy? I'm here. Councilor Haneke? Present. Okay, we're short, uh, uh, we're missing Alicia and Matt, um, but we do have a quorum. So why don't we go ahead and open this up to public comment. If there's anyone who wishes to make a public comment, could you please raise your hand and Athena will bring you in. Athena, I think we can go for three for the full three minutes, given the size of the, the audience. Okay, I'm seeing Tony Cunningham. Yep. Uh, Tony, please uh, go ahead. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Uh, District Tony Cunningham, District One. Um, I sent a couple of emails about the capital budget, so I won't repeat that now. Um, and then I wanted to suggest that you, I want to put this on the record so that it's on the recording that you either half or remove entirely the debt service for the library because it will go to free cash when it's not spent. And I feel like it would be better used now to cover the higher regional school budget appropriation and um, at, put the balance into roads and sidewalks or something else that's a high priority. And then secondly, I'm delighted to see Kevin Fusilier here. Um, very excited about the track and field project. My daughter is one of the middle school track and field athletes who won the championship last weekend. Um, so I'm very excited to have a new track in, in a year and a half. Thanks, Sarah. Um, I just wanted to point out that the total on the spreadsheet didn't seem to include the design fee. So when you look at the bottom line of the costs for the three options, it's you got to add the 254,000 for design. So it looks like we didn't have enough for option 1D with the 3.4 million without doing a higher appropriation. And I'm hoping we can get to the reoriented version if there's a way to trim um, the lights and the bleacher pad and, and maybe reduce the sidewalks and other things to get it down to an amount that could be affordable. Um, but if not 1D, it would be great for that to go ahead next summer if we can't get to the reoriented version. Thank you so much. Okay, uh, I just want to mention uh, Matt uh, and Alicia have joined us. So Matt, can you hear us? I can, Bob. Great, thanks. And Alicia? Yes, I can. Thank you, Bob. Okay, thanks. Okay. Uh, Athena, there's a... Uh, okay, just a next number. we have a phone number ending in 0810. Please go ahead. Identify yourself, please. Uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yes. Um, yes, I have. My name is Vincent O'Connor. I live at 175 Summer Street, apartment 12. And I have a public comment if it's in order at this time. Sure. Go ahead. Okay. Um, first two things are related um, that um, I believe the Finance Committee should essentially make whole the regional school budget uh, uh, maybe as a gift um, rather than a, a country rather than an appropriation that would count against the um, the base and uh, I'm happy to see that uh, certain uh, academic uh, departments are going to be protected but I think it would be terribly unwise to uh, reduce uh, things like counselors and the, uh, the time that teachers spend uh, planning and working together and the restorative justice position and so forth, those are positions that are essentially given we have a, a, a district that is very heavily impacted because so many uh, students have IEPs 
And that's not because we are doing something wrong. It's because we are losing so many students to private and, and charter schools. So I think those positions are essential. I think the new superintendent deserves the opportunity to operate with a full deck and uh, to be held accountable next next spring. But um, uh, you can't, uh, it would be like having a new town manager and then uh, knocking 10 cops off the list. That would be crazy um, and unfair, and I think uh, the same situation prevails here. The library appropriations all should be heavily scrutinized. And uh, if the library trustees want to throw good money after bad, that, that's, that they'll be held accountable uh, in a year and a half, but the, the town should not be doing that. Uh, finally, um, as the person who initially raised um, issues about Amherst College 10 or 12 years ago, I'm happy to see that it's a, a very uh, you know, active topic of conversation. I was happy to see that the manager talked about uh, the university and, re and, and, their, and the traffic they generate in relationship to our, our need for road uh, repair money. But there is a third item, like a third category, and that is the one that actually can generate the most money annually. Um, I believe the Finance Committee should find some place in the public health budget for an ex the, whatever small expenditure might be, ne might be needed to give us an approximation, even a plus or minus 20% approximation of what the town savings would be if we had universal single payer health care as proposed in the legislation that has 50 at this or 60 co sponsors at this point in the legislature. Because I think that that information in terms of what our savings would be is the most effective way we can advocate for that legislation. Our legislators and, and the public that votes for them and votes for everybody else needs to understand what the savings would be and based on reasonable determination, not pie in the sky, not an estimate, but some evaluation that is, is done um, purposefully with the use of a active figures and um, and I, I think that there needs to be perhaps a small amount appropriated for that purpose because it is the most effective, effective way that any municipality can advocate for legislation that would result in, in savings that really amount to millions of dollars annually. And the same thing, I'm proposing the same thing to the school committee because they have different uh, information and restrictions on information, so there really should be two sets of of, of evaluations going on, one with regard to the schools, one with regard to municipality, and um, those final figures should be placed in the hands of our state representatives and senators to use um, in their advocacy. They are both sponsors of the legislation, and I believe that we need to put in their hands the most effective way that they can advocate for it, which is the information about what that legislation would do in terms of savings for our municipal and school budgets. Okay, Vince, we're going to have to ask you to wrap up. That's it. Okay. I, I, that's, that, was, that was the, the third point. Happy to hear the, the discussion about Amherst College. Um, and uh, happy to hear the manager talking about the university and roads, but I think the, the real savings long term is going from a universal system to a universal single payer system. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. You're entirely welcome. All right, I think, is there anyone else who wishes to make a public comment? I don't see any more hands, so I think we'll close the public comment period. Um, and we should move to the next uh, issue on the agenda, which is the Regional School Committee request regard related to the Amherst Regional High School track and field project. Um, 
And uh, Kevin, you're here from uh, the, the uh, what is it, S SLR? That's Correct. Um, yeah. And if you could maybe just give us a little overview of the projects, um, the potential projects. And then I know uh, Sam McLeod is here and if the CPAC has discussed this issue um, and Sam, I would appreciate uh, hearing from you as well. Uh, Dave, did you want to ch chime in first? No, you're on. You're muted. I I just um, wondered, Bob. Um, since this request is coming from the regional school committee, I see that acting superintendent Doug Slaughter is here, and I wondered whether he might introduce this and then turn it over to uh, SLR. Would that's that fine. be okay with the committee? That's 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 fine. Doug, sure. I'll be I'll be brief. I mean, uh, you know, the um, school committee sent a recommend you know a, a request to the to the town council just relative to uh, potentially um, looking at you know some additional funding to do um, uh, a slightly more expensive project that fit in with the master planning that we did a few years ago. Um, you know, understanding the, the the limitations on on funding we had both both uh, from the CPA as uh, CPAC as well as from from the free cash from the from the town council um, and then you know we we realized in putting all of the sources together that it wasn't that that far a, a, a stretch to get back to to that north south orientation as an option as well and so we wanted to be um, thoughtful about asking potentially for for um, a consideration of that that fit in with that master plan process um, uh, and so, of course, with the with the two chunks, the CPA funding that had already been approved, as well as the um, as well as the uh, free cash appropriation, um, both of those had restrictions. So we we're asking for those to free to be freed up so that we could do a, a bit more expensive project in the current east west orientation and then um, certainly put their request in for an additional um, chunk of, of resource available to to uh, potentially go with the north south orientation, which I think gets us a lot of other advantages to to the uh, to the rehabilitation of that of that facility. So just a little preface there. Um, so Kevin's here from SLR, there are designers. Um, we do, as you know, which is part of why this is on your agenda for today and we're under a bit of a time crunch just because we need to give our designers a sufficient amount of time to do design work uh, and get through the permitting process depending on the choices we make relative to uh, what we'll explore. And, and I think uh, I would also suggest that, you know, that, that we're, fully understanding of the constraints the town's operating under and, and uh, the difficulty of asking it for additional funds, um, whether they're used for a capital project like this, that's gonna last for, for 30 years or so, or if it's you know something more immediate. So we, we recognize and respect that, that deliberation you guys are taking and, and the town council's taking relative to this and, and uh, you know, uh, appreciate the consideration of these, these other options and, and ways to think about it. We're open to suggestion about how we how we can approach this. So I think I'll, I'll if it's all right with the, the chair, I'll I'll ask Kevin to, to perhaps walk us through a little bit of what he's got. Kevin, before you start, Sarah, did you want you, your hand was up and down. So are you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I just wanted Doug to, to speak to their urgency of this. And if I could just add, um, you know, I'm on the regional school committee. I'm not really speaking for the school committee, although obviously our decisions are in the public record, but um, it, this project has been just delayed by years. It's taking forever. And I at least, but I think everyone on the committee is very anxious to just do it already, <laughs> build a new track. And so we want, I want us to be able to move forward very soon. And, um, and so that presents some constraints. I also want to say that from my point of view, the, the request for additional money to reorient the track, it's really a very gentle request. <laughs> it's just, from my point of view, again, informing council what it would take to do that. And if it's important to the town to reorient the track, that's, that's where we are. But, but um but time, but time is short, I think, from our end because we've waited so long. So thank you. Okay, 
I'm sorry, Kevin, you can go ahead. Okay, um, if it's all right, I'll share my screen. I have a, a few slides I would like to go through. I'll just make sure I get this to work. All right, can everyone see my uh, presentation? Yes. All right, well, thank you for having me. Again, my name's Kevin Fusilier. I'm a principal landscape architect with SLR International Corporation. Uh, I run our athletics design division. Uh, just a brief summary of where we are at this point in the project. Um, so phase one uh, is our site evaluation phase. We have conducted a, a new topographic survey of the site. We've delineated uh, a wetland corridor on the north part of the uh, property. We have uh, taken topsoil samples and sent that those to a lab for testing. We've done a more invasive geotechnical investigation of both the existing track um, and if we are to do future uh, athletic field lighting. We've started to analyze the uh, Tanbrook culvert, which runs beneath the campus and below our project site. And the only uh, part of phase one we haven't completed, but will be soon, uh, we were waiting for school to get out. We're gonna do a series of shallow test pits uh, in the natural grass field areas to understand um, quantity of topsoil and uh, the uh, permeability of that soil uh, for reuse uh, in natural grass athletic fields. Uh, along with that, we have started chipping away at phase two, um, which you'll see tonight. We basically revisited um, some earlier concepts prepared by others. Um, and not only for a design and constructability, but also to revisit the, the cost estimates, um, knowing that those uh, original concepts were prepared a couple of years ago. Um, and definitely before we, we saw some significant um, increases in, in pricing due to the pandemic and overall inflation. However, we, uh, we have, uh, at one point, we, I think we had 11 design options. Today, you'll see um, we narrowed that down to three options. Um, we need to now narrow that down to one so we can uh, finish up the preliminary design and begin the permitting process. So the three options, uh, it's 1B, which is uh, retaining the existing track footprint in an east-west orientation. However, we would reconstruct the track, expanding it to eight lanes. Um, we would renovate the, the natural grass field within the track. Um, renovation would include uh, some, some uh, decompaction, some amending of the soil and uh, regrading the field and then sodding it. That 1B carries a budget of $1.7 million at this time. 1D is uh, really, it looks the same on paper as 1B, but in this one, we would fully reconstruct the, uh, the grass field and it, it has subsurface drainage. Um, we'd be doing a full root zone amendment to the topsoil. And then we would also be uh, modifying and retrofitting the existing field lighting for LED. Um, that option is uh, currently at 3.4 million. And then option 3C is reorienting the track to uh, really in New England, the preferred north-south orientation uh, with any new facility. We always try to get that orientation if the site allows, which this one does. Um, the, the actual shape of the track changes to an IAAF or World Athletics Track configuration, um, basically um, the shape that would be used in Olympic in most college level uh, track facilities. I mentioned the north-south orientation. Uh, which is in preferred New England for New England. Um, it's really doing as much as you can to keep sun out of players' eyes uh, during daytime games. Um, the the multi-purpose natural grass field within the track uh, gets slightly increased, allowing for a larger soccer field footprint. And then the area to the west that is currently a track and throwing areas and some practice fields, we would also reconstruct that to another full-size multi-purpose uh, athletic field. And uh, this is just north of $4.2 million in the cost. So now with some pictures, um, this is the 1B expanding to an eight lane track, reconstructing the track areas and renovating the grass field. <clears throat> And I won't go through the detailed budgets, but they're there for uh, review if you'd like. Um, again, 1D looks the same as 1B, but here we're doing much more renovation to the grass field, making it a high performance athletic field. And we are doing the renovation to uh, 
uh, retrofit the existing lights to LED. Um, one thing I didn't mention under all three concepts, we are making the site fully ADA accessible with new walkways. And we're also enhancing the, uh, the drop-off area and sidewalks along Mattoon Street. And then, so 3C is the, the most significant uh, proposed improvement. This is reorienting the track, uh, an eight lane Olympic shaped track, north south, uh, completely new facility, uh, the ADA improvements, um, LED lighting system, new four pole LED system. And then we're showing you, you know, how we can reconstruct the area to the west um, to get a full size multi purpose grass field. We're also proposing a bleacher pad at this time, um, not necessarily bleacher systems, but we feel that while the site's opened up and uh, under construction that it would make sense to install this at that time, rather than have to go back and, uh, you know, mess up a, a brand new site. So again, the eight lane track, all new fencing, uh, this would be fully fenced track, the new LED, the new ADA walks, um, and then the secondary field. So the project schedule moving forward, as I mentioned before, we still have some test pits to do. Um, that's just gonna give us just a little bit more information that will be helpful in estimating and obviously for our final design. Um, we're working on preliminary design now, and we would hope with, uh, you know, if we get some direction on what option we were going to proceed with, that towards the end of July, we would be completed with preliminary design, and then permitting could start immediately. We anticipate permitting uh, will probably take about three months, but we're giving ourselves a little bit of wiggle room here, um, and the goal would be final design and bidding either at the very end of 2024, or the start of 2025. And then the ultimate goal is start construction immediately uh, after the conclusion of the uh, spring sports season in 2025. And with that, that concludes my presentation. I'll stop sharing and I'm happy to answer any questions you have. Kathy? Uh, yeah, Kevin, thank you for that. Um, actually, it would be helpful, um, and I can ask others if this would be, I have a series of questions on option three. And okay. my questions are, my intent is to ask if some things could be done later without hurting the uh, basic design, because we don't, we have enough money for number two. <laughs> Yeah. We don't have enough number for number three. So the the question is, I'm, I'll be very specific. So I think it might be useful for people to see just that cost chart for three. Okay. Give me one second. Let me start sharing again. Okay. Okay, so a couple of them, I, I sent you one in advance, but then I, this morning was pouring over this. So a couple are in the smaller ticket. So I wasn't sure why we need football, football goalposts, if that means football, football, as opposed to soccer, um, because we have a football field, that's 26,000. Then the new pole vault event area seems to ha be in twice where it was only in once in the other one two twenty five thousand dollar numbers and the shot put is in twice one for 30 thirty thousand and one for 40 so it's sort of just questioning that because i was cross listing oh. it i was cross oh. <laughs> okay. i was yep. looking at it in comparison to option two which had shot put and it had a pole vault, but it had it in only once and it was 25,000. So it's a, just a question on whether that was an inadvertent double count or something's happening in three that's different than in two. So no, I, that's a great pickup. And we've been looking at these for a, a month now. Um, so we will definitely revisit that. Um, I know you said it is small ticket item. Um, but no, I, I will definitely double check that um, and make sure that we're not, if we are double dipping, we'll correct it. And if there's a justification of why it was listed twice, I'll, we'll try to get to the bottom of that. I appreciate those, uh, those 
highlights. Okay. And then the football one was just a comment on why do we need the 26,000, but the big ticket items. Um, if, if the lighting system had all the conduits in it, but mm -hmm. didn't do the lights, could we do the lights later? And I'm looking at potential sources that come up, come and, and in our new school building, we've done something like this with the field. We we're getting it light ready, but not yep. light. And I yeah, so we've we've definitely done that on on multiple projects before. Um, with the the performance specification that we put in for the lighting, um, we typically get this one single vendor uh, that supplies the lighting. And the way they we can absolutely just put in empty conduit and pull boxes, and then we can also take it one step further and put in the concrete foundations. So when uh, if and when the school chooses to get lighting at a, a future date. Um, it's a very quick uh, and clean installation where the poles and the fixtures show up on site, they're assembled, and then it, it takes a crane to lower them onto the, uh, the concrete foundations, and then they just have to get wired up. So uh, we have a $500,000 budget for field lighting at this point. I would say, you know, if you just did conduits and pull boxes, um, you know, probably $30,000. And then if you were to go with the four foundations as well, um, I think to be conservative, probably about 150. So you're saving about $350,000 right there. Okay. And so in, and, and just so everyone else knows where I'm thinking, I'm thinking that there's an opportunity of when all of our community preservation act funds open up again to grab the money. So it's not like sometime after we're all gone, we'd put this in. And then my second question is the second field, not the one in the middle of the track. I think the money for that is line number 45, the site restoration. So as you said, you're doing, yeah. and, so, and that's 168,000. So I was looking for big numbers and it, I have the same question. Does that need to be done at the same time or could it be done, plan to do it, but do it? And, and I'm, Looking for narrowing the gap because we have three point almost three point five million in hand, and so could I get the four point two nearer to the amount we've got with the plan to put that? So those were my questions, and I'll stop talking. Yeah. So on that one, the only uh, issue is we want to any topsoil that's removed that would be beneath the running track needs to find a new home. So the idea would be that we spread that topsoil somewhere on the campus it's a lot cheaper to keep it on campus than it is to pay someone to haul it off um so we could look at reducing that scope somehow or if the school was okay with it and the the town approved it you know maybe there's somewhere we can stockpile it for future application on that field you know part of that field is going to be disturbed by removing the existing running track um so it's going to have to have some level of restoration during this phase, um, but that is something that could be considered as not going as far with that that improvement. So again, you're saying we'd have to do something, even if it's spread the dirt, you know, to yes. move the dirt and spread the dirt. So okay, yeah. so that answers my question, and I, I I just wanted to make it clear what I was trying to do. I was trying to look at how much I could narrow the gap. Yeah. Um, and we had a few other discussions about value engineering or, you know, getting this budget down. Um, the improvements I discussed along Mattoon Street um, is on a different property. Um, and there was some discussion that maybe that could be funded somewhere else. Um, it's, I think when we looked at the number, we extracted just the, the cost of that. I think we were at like 70 or 80,000 for those sidewalk improvements. Um, and then we also, you know, no matter what, we're going to make um, everything up to current building code and ADA accessibility code. Um, but we still, that doesn't mean we have to have sidewalks all the way around the oval. Um, and there is a possibility of reducing some of that scope. Um, and then also the extent of chain link fence. Um, we're not only under that option three, we're not only putting a four foot black chain link fence around the track facility, but we're also replacing the uh, the fence along Mattoon Street. So there could be some savings there. Yeah, and just, I, I, I said I was ended, but I don't actually like to value engineer 
projects if it means taking value out. So I was thinking that a piece could be done later as opposed yeah, to but not that's done That's it. what I mean. Yeah, just yeah. getting this number down, but um, we wouldn't propose anything that it, it would not be easy or you know, at least possible to do at a later date. Okay, I, I'm that that's amended. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, and I know Andy and, and Council Haneke and Deb Leonard have their hands up, but Doug, did you want to respond to Kathy's comments? Yeah, just just one small thing about that that playing field to the west, or you know, the, that's not part inside the track. Um, you know, we, we need that to be a fairly usable space um, for our athletic teams. Uh, you know, we use all the spaces we have now, and and we need that to be useful as well. So I think that would be one I'd, I'd struggle with with reducing out of the out of the project. Um, we need it to be a fairly functional space for us. Um, uh, just to have enough playing fields for for our teams and and for the town. So I just want to mention that. Thanks. And, Thank you. and Doug, just on it, if CPA could open up quickly, and that could be the second thing that's put in. I was looking at so that it not that not removing it, but just well. And I didn't mean. I think it's useful too. I wasn't like don't do it, but you know, just go grab. You need to start. I understood you need to start now. Um, and. And and then I was looking for what could be done in the last few months when we grab extra money where we can't commit that money right now. So oh, thank you. Okay, Andy. Yeah, I appreciate the questions and answer because it's really uh, pretty much what I was thinking about too. I was gonna ask it in a little different way. And I think you pretty much already responded to it, but I'll tell you how I was going to state it and see if there's anything that you want to add to what you said. You don't need to repeat what you, what you said, but the way I had been planning to ask the question was with pretty much the same beginning statement. If we came up five to seven hundred thousand dollars short of the goal, um, what could be done to allow us to do a north-south orientation project. So uh, is there anything else that you would um, throw in for consideration, I guess, is what's left because you've really um, given a fairly substantial response uh, through what you already answered for Kathy. Yeah, the only thing I'll add is, you know, I had mentioned when we started this, uh, we we had about 11 options on the table. And, you know, those included synthetic turf versus natural grass, but a decision was made early on that, um, that natural grass was the desired way to go here. Um, from a community standpoint, um, you know, we we are matching some of the facility features that are out there with dual sand uh, long jump runways, dual pole vault to allow for a uh, shifting direction due to wind and a dual shot put. Um, at a high school level, sometimes, you know, dual long jumps make a lot of sense for efficiency because you're running both triple jump and uh, long jump, but a dual shot put, uh, we don't typically always uh, see that at a, a high school level. Um, and same with dual pole vault. And it's, it's more because pole vault the the pads weigh so much um that we rarely see them move um so there it, it's again small ticket items on top of some of the bigger things that we've already mentioned um but the way we structure almost any bid is uh we, we have bid alternates so you know we if we're especially if we're if we're short on budget or we're worried about pricing coming in high um we like to include bid alternates in our our packages um to hopefully uh, come in under budget and be able to select those alternates. Um, but if not, um, you know what they could cost to do it down the road, you have a price. And so um, that can sometimes lead to, to post project funding and, and get those items. Um, but it, it ensures you have a project, right? That we don't have to go back and put this, at that point, value engineer it and have to rebid the project and lose schedule and, and all of that. So. That's that's pretty typical for our projects, but I, I think at this point now we've kind of talked about everything that could be done at a later time um, if we do indeed need to take some of these features out and bring that cost down. Andy, did you have a response or 
No, no, I think that was very helpful. I had my hand up again a little bit, and then I took it down because I think that uh, basically the question has been answered that if we came up within the range that I gave for, but really wanted to try and get a north-south orientation, uh, is it possible? And I think that uh, the answer is now come back as yes. So I, I think that I appreciate the response. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Haneke. Thank you. Um, I appreciate all the questions on on reducing, or I guess I would call it phasing the north-south. Um, unfortunately, it's not our choice on whether to phase. And so my questions are going to it, relate to our regional school committee members and superintendents who are here about phasing. Um, because they're the ones that ultimately have to decide on whether what project to pick given the money we potentially make available. And it's my understanding and we are here to make recommendations to the council on three particular financial orders, potentially four different votes, and I'll address those too. So the SLR slides, the very last one had a sort of timing. And so one of my questions is, does the school committee's decision, it looks like right now they need to make a decision on which project to do, but the bidding isn't going to happen till December or so, which means in my understanding, the money needs to be available by December. And so is the school committee willing to make a decision to do North-South if there is assurances that the funding will be available for North-South, even if it's not available now? And I ask that because the particularly the Amherst CPA committee has just made a very clear statement, I believe, during their meetings that they would like to see an application for more CPA fundings to ensure north south orientation. They don't have that application yet. The other three towns don't have that application yet for them to potentially add funding. But that funding might be there, particularly with Amherst, in enough time, especially if construction doesn't start till June, the vote might be able to happen in December to guarantee that July 1, the funding is available, which would be in enough time, presumably, for it to be available to pay whatever contract is signed. Um, but we wouldn't have that vote now. And so I'd like to know whether, if there are assurances that the funding will be available or, you know, available by July 1, but voted by December for a North South orientation would the school committee now in Jan June, when they need to make that decision, make a decision to go north south? Um, and if my understanding about when the funding absolutely needs to be available for bid signing and all happens, please correct me on that. Um, with CPA, the CPA committee voted their recommendation in two different votes. Does the council get to vote its approval in two different votes? That's a technical question. Um, in other words, do we get to vote the approval of those recommendations in two votes, meaning one vote approving a recommendation to remove the artificial turf restriction and a second vote to approve or disapprove the removal of the north-south orientation restriction? Um, and then I'm curious from SLR if they have any ideas or any you know thoughts on the difference between 1B and 1D is approximately 1.7 million and it's adding a drainage basically um, to the field itself. Um, under current maintenance standards, how long would that new field with new drainage actually be maintained in a decent condition versus the condition we see in the fields now? Um, it is a question regard, regarding those two changes. Um, and then I just also want to confirm that the stub field that goes in the north-south orientation as compared to the rebuilt fields in the east-west orientation is actually proper, properly sized. The stub field, the north-south size, is sized, the interior field is sized appropriately for all sports that we play, whereas the northeast-west orientation field does not have appropriate dimensions for the sports we play. Um, I think that has been glossed over in the most recent conversations. And so I just want to make 
clear and, and hear again that we're not just gaining a north-south orientation with that rotation. We are gaining actual proper field dimensions for the sports we play that in technically probably shouldn't be played on the field now. Um, so I know that's a lot. Kevin, did you want to respond to the, the field issue? The sure. <laughs> All right. So I'll, I'll go in reverse order. The, the fields that we've designed um, are National Federation High School um, standard field sizes. Again, I always reference soccer, be, soccer being the largest. Um, under the Northwest orientation, we are getting a, a 210 a uh, 210 wide soccer field by 360. So 360 uh, is the longest field um, that accommodates football. Um, if we remove the goals, we won't mark the field for football, but it could be accommodated. Uh, girls lacrosse, boys lacrosse, and field hockey all fit within that footprint. Excuse so, me, Kevin, you called that Northwest field. Uh, so, oh, so which one are you speaking? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, North-South. <laughs> but also under the East-West, we are getting full regular regulation fields. However, uh, the maximum width with that track configuration is 195. Um, and it doesn't leave much room between the sideline and the running track itself. Um, so we are picking up a little more space with the north-south orientation. Uh, but again, they would all be designed to fit regulation um, high school fields. Um, as for maintenance, um, you know, we do our best to educate our clients about ongoing maintenance for natural grass. It is up to them to actually do it. Um, natural grass takes a lot of maintenance. Um, and we're actually finding that um, communities, and we just did this in East, uh, in Longmeadow, um, they're contracting out annual maintenance on their natural grass fields. They're putting a contractor, uh, making them responsible for mowing, all the mowings, um, seasonal maintenance, aeration, overseeding, um, and they're finding it very useful. Uh, it's not cheap. Uh, it's about $10,000 an acre a year. So you figure a field's about two acres, um, you know, math is, math is there. Um, and then natural grass, no matter how well you maintain it, um, it's a living organism and can take about 20 to 25 hours of use a week. And that's when it's dry. Um, when it's wet and you start using it, you can pack the soil, you smash the grass and it doesn't come back. Um, so natural grass definitely takes, takes maintenance, but with proper maintenance, it will, it will last. Um, so those were the last, I think those were the two questions for me. If not, please let me know. <laughs> uh, Doug, did you want to answer or make some comments? Yeah, I think I can, I can talk to the timing question a little bit. Um, as far as the authorization and funding, that sort of thing. So, so there's two things that we're, we're uh, needing to make sure we have time for, and we want to make sure we have clear direction to Kevin and his crew at, at, at SLR. And that's, uh, we need to have a fairly, we have to be a little careful about we, of what we can include or not include in the design. If we, you know, if we ask for things we don't end up using, then they have to redesign. That's going to cost us more in our design phase. Also it changes what permitting we might need. So we, we need to have some, some indications of, of what we uh, can move ahead with. And so the firmer, you know, the, the council can be with, with appropriation, the better for us. Um, nonetheless, we're happy to explore and, and I've been already sort of mentally thinking about uh, CPA applications. So uh, in all four communities, quite frankly. So um, we are thinking along those lines as, as al uh, alternative sources of funds. Uh, when we go to bid, you know, we have to have, you know, construction available documents, which require the design to be pretty specific. And then to actually uh, go into that bid process and sign a contract, we have to have funds uh, sort of in hand, either a, a debt authorization and or cash. Uh, so so that could be as early in the chart that you showed as early as end of October. I think that's probably a little early, um, but nonetheless, we'll, we'll need to have a pretty firm uh, set of numbers by then. Um, that being said, if we've got some some sense that there's some you know potential in things like CPA funding or other funding for things like lights or or um, other sort of you know value engineered pieces that can come a little bit later or we can think about later or add on, um, 
we can certainly go through those processes and 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 the design and implementation of those in a sort of second phase, a mini phase after the fact would be not too onerous on us, and I don't think terribly terribly expensive to do, but. But nonetheless, we do need some level of, of assurance fairly soon, just so we can give solid direction to Kevin and his crew so they can do a design uh, that we can get submittable documents and we can actually then, uh, you know, enter into contracts with. So we do have, it's that's sort of an in-between answer. I don't mean to be, you know, unclear, but but we do have to have some some direction, even though we don't actually need the cash till a little bit later, but we need some pretty clear direction. Um, uh, so that we can give our designer direction. And on the question of like the two versus one, that's a technical question that <laughs> maybe Athena can answer. I can't for sure. Okay. Thank you, Doug. Uh, Deb, you've been very patient. <laughs> oh, may maybe let's just let Athena jump in and then circle back. There, there would be separate votes on the amendment to the CPA and the amendment to the original council funding and then um, the proposed additional funding order that's in your packet. Did I touch all the questions, Mandy? No, I was actually asking about there's two amendments to CPA and the CPA committee voted two separate amendments. And so are we, can we vote those two separate amendments separately? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Deb? Yeah, thank you, Bob and Athena. Um, a couple questions and then just asking Councillor Haneke. I'm not exactly sure what the question was. I'm sorry. Um, but if I, I like the idea of staggering the costs, if that gets us the north south orientation, but I can only speak for myself. There's nine of us on the committee. Um, I, I, I would think we would be so excited about making that change that we would be willing to work with, um, you know, stretching out the costs in a way that was manageable. If, if Councillor Haneke is asking, would we be applying for CPA funds to cover that? Absolutely. Um, but I'm not sure that was the question from all towns. Um, we being, I would encourage the regional committee to do that and advocate for that. And then in terms of stretching things out, um, I would, I, I just like to understand the timing on that. So if we didn't put the lights in, I'm assuming we can't use the lights we have now, and therefore we would have a dark field for some period of time until the, CPA funds came in and we were able to do that. So I just was wondering how long that would be and then the differential cost in bundling it into the project now versus doing separately. And then the last part about those, um, the football, whatever they're called, the goal posts. Um, to me, Having had a fair amount of time watching kids get hurt on both the community field and the regional field, um, and I, I don't know how the athletic director is going to make a decision about who gets that field use, but it would be very hard for me to preclude the football team from having access to that field should the opportunity arise based on what we did over the first couple years. Again, if it's a matter of just stretching that out and making sure that sometime in the near future they would have access to that, um, that would be good. But I just would want to know the timing on, on those two parts. Thank you. Um, Kathy, did you have specific responses to these questions or did you want to talk about something else? I, I just... I wanted to talk about CPA, but I think Sam is planning on doing it. So yeah. I just want to make it clear, Deb, I wasn't talking about stretching it out. But if we need to go, as Doug said, the first time we go out to bid, we need to have all the dollars in hand. If we know we're following with dollars for the second piece, it's not lights come on five years later. That wasn't the vision. Um, and Sam can talk about the Amherst CPA because we're a different governance structure. We can act faster 
um, and have when we've needed to. Dave had one where we had to expedite, CPA had to expedite something to meet a grant schedule. And so it wasn't a wait till July of the next year. So Sam can talk about our, it's possible for the Amherst if it's all four towns are trying to meet that gap. So I was just trying to get a sense of what you could go out to bid for the first time you went out to bid that wouldn't hurt the fact that you're getting all the pieces in action, that it wouldn't undermine the integrity of it. Um, and I, uh, Kevin gave, I thought, the answers I was looking for. And the only one thing I want to say about football is the more teams you put on it, the rougher they are, the more the field gets wear out. So that's the the school's decision on there is a football field. Should they play football on the football field? So I won't speak to that. I was just looking at football folds are 26,000. So I literally went through what has to be in this package on day one. Um, and that's a small item, but three 25,000s add up to, or four add up to 100,000. So I was looking for money. I'm, that's it. Okay. Sam, you've been very patient. Maybe you can talk, speak to us about CPA and CPAC and your discussions. I'd be glad to. And uh, thank you, Bob, for uh, having this hearing and for uh, inviting me to speak. Uh, and thank you all the multiple committee members here, finance, town council, school committee, town staff, uh, as well as the consultants. Uh, we did meet based on the referral of the uh, regional school committee request, the referral coming from the town council asking to rescind restrictions on the $800,000 award from June 2nd of 2022 regarding the track and field. We had a very thorough discussion. Some people watching might have said it was long, <laughs> but it was uh, involved. And the reason it was involved is uh, committee members uh, myself included, consider this to be a very important decision uh, for the town, specifically recognizing that once this decision is made, whatever the outcome is, that track and field is going to be where it is for 40 to 50 years, going back to when I played on it. Uh, so it is, the timing is perhaps pressing, but the magnitude is grand. So uh, that was in the mindset of many committee members uh, regarding the long, long term, no changes once this is done. Uh, I wanted to speak to the motions. I'm not going to address the artificial turf. Uh, we quickly removed the requirement of artificial turf based on many uh, reasons, including the recognition of the reality and the recommendations of the applicants. Uh, the longer discussion related to the nature of the north-south field, the motion that we provided to town council, or excuse me, to town staff, was to rescind the restriction on the north-south orientation with the strong recommendation to pursue the north-south option and encourage the town to return to CPAC, Amherst, for additional funds to meet that north-south objective as soon as possible, comma, as needed. <clears throat> the vote was six to three. I wanna clarify for those listening and those on the committee that although there were three votes against that motion, I was one of them. Uh, my vote was in no way against a north-south field. Uh, and it was not against the uh, seeking of additional CPA funds. I was in favor of both. Uh, speaking for myself, I felt that the north-south field is, orientation is of such importance, uh, it critical, having been a former athlete, coach of the high school team in summers, uh, coach of all the athletes, that the north-south field with the sun in the eyes uh, is of such magnitude that I wasn't comfortable opening the door to the possibility of not having that. That was also the case with a second of the three votes that were in opposition. So two of the three people who voted against that motion did not do so because they were against seeking CPA funds. We both advocated for it, uh, as well as the North-South field, they were in favor. The third person uh, did not mention a comment related to uh, the additional CPA funding, but there were questions raised regarding 
phasing of the project indicating a preference by inference to the north-south field. In addition, I asked the committee members, does anyone on the committee have any opposition to a north-south field? It seems everybody wants it. Does anyone, would anyone like to state anything? Uh, it was a very direct question. I wanted to ensure that there wasn't any issue. Nobody said anything. So everybody spoke in favor of the north-south field. Everybody recognized it. And there was very strong uh, uh, general desire, in fact, discussions about whether or not we could make an authorization at that point in time for additional funding. Whether or not such an authorization, when it came to vote, what the outcome would be, I can't say. Uh, but the motion speaks for itself. Uh, and there were at least two, myself being one of the opposition votes, who quite uh, would be quite welcoming and hopeful that the committee would come back to to the CPA committee, the school committee, and others. So I'm uh, one other comment I want to make uh, regarding the meeting. <clears throat> um, I had asked about the phasing capacities of the project. Uh, specifically seeing large dollar amounts in the lighting, as well as the suggestions I heard from Kevin regarding the um, platform for the stands and possible sidewalks with the mindset of uh, gaining 700 some odd thousand dollars. Uh, I did look at previous meetings that we've had on the track in the past in the Port River School, and uh, there's no issue with CPA paying for lighting at recreational complexes. It's a common asset at recreational sites, just like fields, plantings, bathrooms, playgrounds, walkways, trails. All of these things make a recreational site a recreational site. This was a comment that I just read that came from Stuart Saginar, who is the head of the uh, CPA coalition who we use as a town to solicit feedback. So <clears throat> I asked that question, or it was asked a couple of years ago regarding the Fort River School to clarify the capacity of CPA dollars to be used for such options. I raised that in case they're segmented, uh, phased, which you know, from my perspective, one person on the committee and one town member, uh, I would hate to see the town and our town athletes, both the high school coaches, by the way, for soccer are, are in favor of uh, reorientation. They all, all the players recognize that the Youth Soccer Association of Amherst, which I'm a board member, uh, is gonna submit a communication in support of uh, reorientation. That's my long-winded answer, merging my own opinions along with the CPA. A uh, last thing that I think is of importance is to recognize that CPA dollars cannot be used to supplant awarded funding. That is to say, once funds are awarded, we can't come in CPA, the school committee and the town can't come to CPA and say, hey, we've got the money. Can you go ahead and please fund this? We're not allowed to. We can, however, give the money. And I, under I assume that was the... Um, origin or the thought process behind Mandy Joe's questions. So I'd be glad to answer any questions regarding the CPA meeting. I assume there won't be any because there's so much going on, but it'd be quite helpful. <laughs> the main point is 6-3 vote, and those three votes were not truly in opposition. In fact, they were very much in favor, at least two of the three. The third one, we didn't ask. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Sam. Uh -huh. uh, Councilor Haneke, did you want to Continue. Um, Bernie can go since he hasn't spoken, and oh, then I can go right. after him. Okay, Bernie. You're on me. Uh, okay. yeah. so, thank you. Um, thanks for the. <laughs> I was. It, it's it's been so long since I've run track. I can't remember what the orientation of the field was, <laughs> but I have driven east west on Route Two early and late in the day, and can relate to that. Uh, um, and I'm also glad to hear that Stu Sagner is still um, working so hard for CPA projects. I really enjoyed my time working with Stu on a number of these. My question is, is it, you know, it seems that Amherst is being asked to come up with 750,000 and change. Um, so where are the requests to the other three communities? Uh, have they been made? Uh, unless the rules around uh, Community Preservation Act 
uh, have changed a lot. Um, there's no constraint on a CPA committee meeting at any time, although some like to pretend there are. Uh, and it takes about two weeks to call a special town meeting. So it just seems to me that the other three towns could act fairly quickly. Um, and, it, and it gets back to a key question that Councillor Haneke asked. If you know, if we're not going to go out to bid until um, until December, uh, we have ample time. Um, and if, say, we need the, the appropriation to exist by October, the end of October, we have ample time to go back to the other communities and say, put up your share, and Amherst will put up its, because I think the the, the, the project is important. The project should be completed as fully as possible the first time out. I don't like to piecemeal things. Um, but I also don't want Amherst to be seen as the uh, rich uncle um, where you go to because we can act quickly and the other towns pretend that they can. So that's my uh, that, that's my little uh, combined question and answer. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, Sarah? Oh. Thank, thank you. Um, I, I appreciate the, the support and creative thinking um, the Finance Committee is expressing ve very much. Um, but I will have to say that uh, uh, unless CPAC can meet like July 2nd, <laughs> like we can put in it, I, I, I'm that I'm I hesitate to rely on assurances because none of the CPAC members here can speak for the whole committee. And I think that most of the members are about to rotate off at the end of the month. So you may have a whole bunch of new folks whose who's feelings about this project are unknown. And of course, can, um, council members can't speak for the entire council. So we don't know until the votes are taken. Um, and I don't want us to lose another construction cycle by and, and wasting money if we've had to design something and then abandon it because the, the funding didn't come through. That would be terrible. But if it is possible for, for a CPAC to take up um, an additional request, basically for FY26, I guess it is, like this summer, we would at least know if we had the lion's share of the funding that could support the reoriented track. And yes, there will be time <laughs> to go to the other towns. Of course, th their ability to fund parts of this is much smaller, but there will be discrete pieces that, that they can, uh, with which they can help. So, so I would just say, um, and I totally get the supplanting, I was going to mention that, um, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't want to have to wait until November or December to find out what CPAC made of a new application, and then to see what council made. <laughs> so, the sooner the better is what I would ask. Thank you. Sam, did you you have your hand up? Did you want to respond? Uh, uh, yeah, uh, and thank you, Sarah. And Sarah is quite familiar with CPAC, of course, having chaired the committee. Uh, and been there for the 2022 initial track uh, vote. Um, certainly, I would be as chair, uh, and I will be chair at that time, uh, to call a meeting as soon as the opportunity presents itself. That is to say, as soon as a request comes in. I would call a, mini, a meeting without a request, but I don't think that that makes sense, and nor is it viable. Uh, there, the one question related to that, whether it be June or July, is as the committee terms end, can committee members continue to vote once July 1st comes around? I did make this inquiry uh, previous two years ago. Uh, I think, in fact, if uh, wow. uh, members can serve until their term, uh, until they are replaced, uh, on a pro tem basis. So it may well be, regardless of whether or not we have repopulated all the representative committee members, uh, that we may still be able to have the full committee vote. I certainly would uh, welcome uh, any request from the school committee uh, or from the town in that regard. Uh, and I would be 
willing to convene uh, any special meeting related to this. Uh, similar, we would welcome an application in the regular cycle. The only technical issue is uh, can committee members who are uh, annual terms continue to serve on a pro tem basis uh, until they're replaced? I suspect that they can uh, because otherwise you have a gap that could be two or three months without anyone sitting on a committee. So uh, please provide an application from the committee. Thank you. Councilman Haneke, uh, you, you dropped your your hand and then raised it again, so. Sorry, it's it's got an automatic drop that I don't always catch. Um, <laughs> a couple of comments and trying to bring the conversation sort of back to what the council committee, the finance committee has to decide. So a comment on the football stanchions, um, the downtown, the, the community fields master plan, as it were, has that interior track field um, being the football field in the future. Um, so I wouldn't want to, no matter what goes now, the plan is that that becomes the football field, not where football is played now. Um, and so removing those stanchions from a plan would would again, in some sense, screw up the whole master plan um, for a small amount of money um, in, in relationship to the rest of the thing. So I wouldn't be supportive of that. Um, so, so we are being asked to vote, I guess, four things or make a recommendation on four things. And I'm just gonna start some of my thoughts and then some questions with the committee, um, to, to the school committee in some sense on, on some other things. Um, and I'm gonna start with my, it, the the two CPA votes. One CPA is asking us to approve a removal of the uh, ash, the artificial turf um, restriction. I would vote to support that um, recommendation to remove that restriction. CPA is also asking us to support removal of a restriction on the CPA funds of a north south orientation. At this point, I will not vote to support that removal of that restriction. Uh, similarly, we are being asked to support removing or recommending supporting removing a north-south orientation restriction on free cash that has already been authorized. I won't vote to support that either. Um, and then we are also being asked to support a new financial order that uses free cash um, for north-south orientation restriction of additional 700 and some thousand dollars. And that's the one I think we've sort of, in a sense, been focusing on, on how we get to recommending that or not. Um, and and we've just heard two different school committee members say two different things, which is totally fine. I'm not I'm not like saying that's that you can't not agree, right? Um, but but that's what makes our job harder um, because of those those differing opinions. Um, we've heard CPA is non-supplantation, but we've heard from finance committee members, including myself, that we want to find a way probably that is not using free cash for the extra money to get the north-south orientation. Yet we want that north-south orientation. And what does the school committee, if, if we approve the financial order using free cash, CPA money is out the window. We can't use CPA money. We can't go back to CPA. We can't go to the other three towns for CPA. And so that's a tough decision from me as a counselor to make to say fund it through free cash when I'm hearing from my own CPA committee that if you give us a couple months, it can be funded through CPA um, and we don't have to use free cash. And so what does the school committee need for us to be able to say we're not going to pay free cash, but we are going to find the money through CPA, hopefully through CPA or the other towns to do that? Or what does it sounds like there's a potential to phase this to remove 750,000 initially to go forward with north south without potentially all of the lighting and all of that right now in the bidding phase not necessarily in the design phase to give the other four town three towns plus our cpa enough time to get the funding in so that when the contract is there the cpa pays for the lighting a lot of the fencing some additional sidewalks and and other things that 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 is that extra money that isn't sort of already appropriated with restrictions. And so my reason for not wanting to recommend removing the north-south restrictions is because if we do, 
I don't think this school committee will do a north south field unless we actually give them the other free cash now. But we and I want to find other ways to pay for that through CPA. And mm -hmm. so I don't think it's appropriate to remove the restrictions because I think that really does give the school committee the tell that we want the north south and we don't want east west. Okay. Um, so that's sort of where I am. I think what we have to do is four different recommendation votes. And I'd love to hear from school committee members, from the acting superintendent on what they need to say north south absent using our free cash additional additional free cash from Amherst if if it is CPA going forward and then what other committee members thoughts are on my thoughts before we go there Holly did you want to jump in and you obviously have had your hand up for a while <laughs> um I'll let you go to Dave and then I'll respond because I think he may be on the same track as me okay Dave I'm not really sure about that, Holly. We'll see. <laughs> no, um, great discussion. I think we're headed in the right direction. I, I, Mandy asked some very good questions there about procedure and 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 votes and stuff. And I, I guess I wanted to just yeah. back back out to, you know, how do we get to the project that I think I hear most everybody wanting to get to, which is the north south orientation. It's about four point two million dollars. I. I think I'm hearing that. I heard that last week from CPAC. We know that's what the, the the majority of those people who attended school committee meetings and town council meetings many, many months ago, that's what athletes wanted, coaches wanted, um, uh, parents wanted. So I think we're, we're getting there. I guess what I just wanted to remind everybody of is, and Kevin, you can, you can jump in here if you think I'm off base here, but, um, I guess in my mind, I think we can still design the $4.2 million project. These things we're talking about taking out, and I'm not sure I'm really comfortable, phasing might be the right word, but in the bid, we can do these alt ads. We can bid the whole pro project and have these additions that amount to plus or minus $750,000. And so, so yes, I guess we could phase them. In other words, we can get the north-south orientation. And if we have to add lights later, if we have to add sidewalks through another means, we may look at uh, chapter 90 money or other town money for our sidewalks. So there are ways that we as the design team working with staff and SLR can come up with that 750 without nitpicking if you will picking away at the project you know goal posts or not or that you know i think there are logical things we can we can put in these alts that don't undermine the integrity of this generational project i i, I guess that's my point and and i think we're moving in that direction so i think the design team can get there procedurally you all are need to figure out how do these Votes take place, and yes, we are willing. I'm working, willing to work with the superintendent to go to the CPAC in Amherst, to go to the CPAC committees in the other three towns, and make a pitch for additional funding. So, I don't know if Kevin, did I say anything there with regard to the project? Um, I don't think if if these things are seen as a next phase. It doesn't mean there'd be need to, I've heard redesign. There would not need to be a redesign. We design for the $4.2 million North-South project. And we have some alts within that project that we know we may not be able to afford in the first phase of construction. That sounds correct to me. Holly, do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, so a couple of things that's in a similar track to Dave is, yes, I don't think that anybody's talking about not doing these things. They're talking about phasing them in. So you would contract for what you have for available funds in the next fiscal year with the other things as alternatives, and then you would do a change order to add the additional alternatives when the funds become available. Um, so I think that that is 
where folks want to go here and we have done that in in many projects here in town before it's it's not it's not that difficult and the other thing that i wanted to um just really quickly address a, a comment that bernie made in regards to the cpa funding the only the only reason we could and the only way we could act quickly on this project is by borrowing these funds our CPA gives out all of their available funds each year, so we do not have any available funds right now for additional projects. We have we have granted out everything that we have. I don't know how the other cities and towns work. I don't know if they grant out all of their available funds, but it may be possible that they can't act as quickly because they don't have available funds. The only way we can do it is by borrowing authorization um, because we don't have to have the funds available. And this year, we would have to have the funds available when our first payment comes due, which would basically be after the um, project was completed. So I can't speak for the other towns. I don't know how their CPA committees run, but it is possible that they would not have the funds available until FY26, which would be June of 25. Um, because right now, you know, in front of finance committee and town council is our full slate of projects, which is basically spending every available um, penny that we have. So I just want to, you know, just point that out and remind folks that we're able or would be able to do this because we would be asking for it to be a borrowing authorization. If that, I hope that makes sense in terms of, you know, timing for other, the other towns. I can't speak to that. I don't know how they do theirs, but it is possible that they will not be able to act as quickly as we do. Thank you. Sam, did you want to respond? Uh, yeah, thank you, Holly. Uh, we do rely on Holly as well as Dave, uh, to provide uh, clarity for many of these issues. I do want to reference that in the meeting at the CPA last Thursday regarding the issue, uh, a couple of members did raise the concept of initiating borrowing to help uh, mitigate or resolve the potential gap here. Uh, but we were informed that it was not appropriate without a specific request but it was raised. Uh, uh, the only other thing I'll add in part, when I played on the field 50 years ago, there were no lights. <laughs> <laughs> we, we played all the time. And I bring that up to indicate one thing. Uh, from the perspective of somebody playing on the field, phasing, staging, or bidding, and then completing the project there is not necessarily something that would be impossible from an athlete's perspective it might impact mm -hmm. the athletic director i can't speak for the school but just that's my comment thank uh, you okay. uh deb you've had your hand up for a while hi yes um i had a question for sarah <laughs> and then just a couple of responses sir did i i really feel like i heard Tillman say that Leverett was encouraging us to apply for CPA funds for this project. But, you know, hours into these meetings, I'm not 100% sure on that. Or even I, I don't have a strong memory, but I think Holly, they may not have any cash, as Holly said, yeah. to, yeah. you know, to just even if they support it, yeah. they've made their decisions. Okay. I'll, 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 I'll definitely follow up with Tillman. And, um, you all know, but I'm going to say anyway, I'm really green. <laughs> I'm on month six, but if it helps to get some clarity into the school committee thinking on this, I would bring forward motions on for our meeting on the 25th that would, I think, <laughs> request authorization specifically for North South orientation to resolve Councillor Haneke's question about where we stand on that. Sarah's like um, Bob. I just oh, need to make a point of falling. order. Um, we have we have a quorum of the school committee in here with with Irv, so yeah. we just need to make sure that we're not having a deliberation on a school committee topic. Irv is here to speak with uh, the committee about the reparations item on the agenda later. So. Athena, that's the Amherst School Committee, but this is a regional matter. But you still have a a quorum of Amherst, but we're not talking about Amherst School District. We're talking about regional. 
we don't have a quorum of the region. Okay. We All can... right. All right. Is that okay, Athena? You good? I'm not sure why Irv has his hand up, so that might answer my question. Okay. Uh, okay. But Irv is here to talk about reparations. Irv? I, I didn't, I was just coming to the finance committee meeting because I was interested in this topic. And um, and I'm not sure whether I can speak or not. Is that not allowed? Um, it, you, you could make a public comment during the public comment period on this item, um, but I had been asked to send you an invitation to talk about reparations. So I would just ask you to hold your comment. I, I was just attending this meeting. Uh, because I was interested in the topic. So it seems like I'm the outside this and I'm not a panelist. Okay, I'll move you back to the attendees. Okay. Thanks. Okay, I'm sorry, Deb. Um, <laughs> you, no, you. you know, so I, I sort of lost my train of thought, but uh, I'm willing to do whatever I can to make this move forward. Personally, I'm willing to make I, I'm my understanding and the understanding I've been operating under for these six months is that we're very mindful of separating any discussion about the region from any discussion about Amherst and and being careful about counting quorum for that. But I'll just withdraw my statements then. And thank you very much. I I do want to say that. I think we, I think this is accurate to say we didn't see a path forward to north south orientation, which is why we made the votes we did. And that's all I'm going to say about that. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, Andy? Yeah, uh, thank you. Um, I'll be real quick. Um, I appreciate uh, all the conversation and discussion. I just want to make my position clear because that will help the school committee in responding. Uh, I very much favor the north-south orientation for all of the reasons that we know about, and so I don't need to re repeat them. Um, I'm very hopeful that um, CPA from Amherst and from the other communities and close the difference. Um, I think that the reasons that I was asking about whether the things that can be postponed um, in, uh, was uh, to allow that to all of this to happen in an orderly fashion. But the one thing that is different from what Mandy said um, and she, we may not be disagreeing, but she was talking about free cash and supplanting. And um, I think that that is um, certainly an, an issue. But I want to make it very clear that I would be opposed to using free cash, period. And I can give you all sorts of reasons, but I'm not going to take the time to do that unless it becomes um, a major topic of discussion as we proceed. But I uh, do want to put, put out there that I think that there are very strong policy reasons from um, Amherst financial management about why free cash would not be an appropriate decision to be made. We've already made a fairly substantial free cash commitment to this, I don't think we should add to it. So that's it. Thank you. Bernie? Yeah, I just, I will add my voice to the chorus of uh, opposition to using free cash. Um, I, I agree completely with, with uh, Andy and uh, we've had these discussions before about free cash and why well, it's really not free. Um, I do want to make the point that the other CPA committees, if they need to borrow and borrow just the same, their powers and authority are no different from the CPA committee here at Amherst. I continue to want to stress that this is a regional school that requires regional support. I'm frankly tired of hearing from people that 
you don't support the Amherst schools. They do, in fact, support the Amherst schools, but these are a portion of this is the region. So we really need to uh, we really need to do that. And I, I think looking at it, we probably have ninety to one hundred and twenty days. The school committee has ninety to one hundred and twenty days to go to the other three communities and secure the funding they need because they've heard from the, the, the finance committee here in Amherst that there's support for the North South project and all that entails. Um, so let's see what the other towns are willing to do. But I'm not willing at this point in time to uh, use free cash when there are other prospects available, both from this town and from the other member towns. Thanks. Okay. Matt? <clears throat> Thanks, Bob. Um, hey, thank you very much, Sarah and Deb and um, and Doug and folks who have brought this forward. I think this is really exciting. I think we're very close to something important. Uh, I'm tracking really closely the things that um, Mandy, uh, Councilor Haneke's flagging, especially around the timing of all this. And I just wanted to ask a question. I don't know if a motion is going to be put forward today. I'm <laughs> getting less optimistic, but I, I'm going to hold out hope. But, um, but if a motion is kind of come forward, around support. Can we make it conditional on, you know, CPAC funding, which doesn't sound particularly far off on the horizon? I mean, can we just support the North South South orientation conditional on, you know, CPAC and other sources of funding? Is that is that something that we don't want to do for some reason? Thanks. That's all. Yeah. Uh, uh, Councillor Walker, we haven't heard from you. Um, thank you, Bob. Yeah, I haven't had much to say, mostly because Mandy Jo, um, Councillor Haneke asked all the really good questions. And so I've been just trying to gather um, some information, but I have a similar question to Matt. And I would also like to know the answer to the question that Matt just asked, but I'm wondering for um, possibly Doug or Sarah or school committee people, is there an impact? Um, and if so, what is it for if we are going to ask you to go and ask um, like for the CPA funding, what would be the impact on the project and moving forward? Doug, do you want to respond? Can you repeat the question one more time? I'm sorry. I, I lost it there for a second. Yeah, it's okay. I'm just wondering about the impact. So, because it seems like um, a lot of counselors are speaking um, and feeling uncomfortable about using free cash, and not that, that we don't generally support um, reorienting the track. And so thinking about if we were to ask you all to go back to the CPA to CPA and to see what you all can coordinate with other towns, is there an impact of that decision, of that de delay per se? Uh, there might be. I mean, if, if here's the thing, um, you know, if the Amher CPA, so it, typically uh, when we were approaching this project before, we, we apportioned a chunk of cost to CPA and went out to ask each of the four communities um, and we did that by virtue of our capital planning uh, metric, which roughly means 80% of that is, is Amherst, um, which is, you know, is going to be a CPA ask of, of 600,000 or so for Amherst. Um, you know, I'm happy to do that. We, we've done those, those, those CPA applications before, um, and, and it's really a question of time to, to do it. And, and for the school committee, it's really a matter of directing me more explicitly if they choose to. Um, to, to take up those, the, the process of uh, applying for things. I, I don't know for the other three communities, their uh, willingness to take up uh, CPA articles out of sequence. And so that could, could significantly um, limit us a little bit, but you know, I mean, Holly spoke a little bit to the, to the, you know, sort of uh, ad alterance as a change order in, in a project. One of the key things is we've been without the, the track for a number of years as far as a, a competitive uh, facility the the field is in tough shape and so i think we want to get that fixed and be in construction next summer um you know i think that that um the the scenario i think about is is if we ask say for for a, a level of funding from from the Amherst cpa they come through with it and the other three towns decide not to what where does that sit um within our within our project scope and, and our bidding process. That's, that's the conundrum we have. Um, but at the same time, I'm, I'm, I would suggest, and I will, you know, committee will, will provide direction. I'm happy to apply to all four CPA committees to 
ask for additional funding. Um, I think we just have to be in, a, in, uh, in the understanding that if, if somehow there isn't that additional funding, we will be needing to go back to our designers to alter that design and potentially could miss a window for construction next year. I think we've had, you know, ample evidence from, from what uh, Mr. McLeod shared that, that there's a pretty strong interest in that support from Amherst CPA, but that's gonna be the lion's share of that funding to, to make a North-South orientation possible. So I think that's the sort of balancing act for me, but um, you know, we can move ahead, you know, and, and start our application for CPA immediately if, if, if um, but I think there are some risks there, but We'll see. I guess I, I'm hoping I kind of answered the question. I was kind of around the edges there. I'm hoping that I got to some of the, the, the things that you were wondering about. Uh, Bob, Jennifer Shaw was in the audience. She has to be let in as a panelist. Is that, going to, you. Is that going to create a quorum? <laughs> no. Is Herb still here? No. That... OK. No. That sounds good. Um, Kathy, call on you. Yeah, I, I I just have a question on the numbers again, Kevin. Um, I'm looking at uh, 1D or 3. Um, the design fee, 254000 is not in the total. I just double-checked the math. Is that, yeah. because, is that because we're paying for it separately in some way? That's how I understood it. We, we didn't add that number into the bottom line because it was a different funding source. But that's already funded, Doug. I just, you know, so it's, I, you know, it's uh, throwing a monk, uh, a wrench in this, but it's not that option three costs 4.4 .4 million, you know, that I don't add that in. There's another, that's already funded in some other way, Doug. Um, I, but just, it's, it's in both, what I call number two and number three, because I don't want to deal with the very first one. It's not in those numbers if you quickly check the math. Um, and I, I I just, I we had a public comment earlier and then I just went back. I thought that was just a problem in 1B, but it's, because it doesn't even exist in 1B, but the others have a line, but when you add them up, they don't add to the total. They're short by 254,000. Yeah, that, that would be, um... The source of funds for that would have to be uh, for the design work would have to be um, accounted for differently. Um, and as a potential resource, we do have a capital stabilization fund that can be the the the, the resource for that if if need be. Um, so I think explicitly not separate at the moment, and can be would be the would be the answer to that. Okay, it just, you know, with the way it's presented, unless you quickly add the three pieces to the 2.7 or the 3.4 for construction, you don't see that it's not in the total. Right, Kevin, I'm not doing something. Yeah. Right no, then. no, you, you're right. It's It's been that way since we started the process. And I, I guess we just never had that discussion to this point, but we kept that out of the actual construction total. Okay, it ju it just whatever it, motions we're going to recommend out of this committee, I just want to make sure everybody understands the cost difference between number two and number three that we're trying to find money for. Um, that's it. That's all I want to do. Um, and then we have almost enough money for two, but not quite if the design fee gets added back in. Thanks. That's the only point I wanted to make, Bob, on the math. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Haneke? Yeah, Doug said something about cost sharing with other CPAs that um, I, I wanted to explore a little bit more in terms of, of what would go on um, as we, in a finance committee, try to figure out what type of recommendation we're going to make and whether there's going to be a letter written. <laughs> it sounds like we might be writing a letter. <laughs> But um, the original 800,000 that is already granted from CPA was Amherst's full share of the prior estimates CPA share. 
which means there was 200,000 assumed would be coming or hoped would be coming from other CPAs right there. And so I, I wanted to explore when you said, oh, but Amherst would be 650 or so, 600 out of the 750. Well, the CPAs were already expected to contribute 200,000. If we put that, because uh, you were hoping to get a million in total CPAs and Amherst has already contributed and approved its 80% of that million, um, that would leave 550,000 of which 80% of that is 440,000 or so. So I guess I'm trying to explore, would you literally only be going to CPAs on 20% uh, of the 750 or would you be for, for you know, that 150 to the other towns or would you be trying to get 360 or 310,000 um, out of the CPAs from the other three towns because the total CPA bill is no longer 1 million. It's now 1.75 million and 80% of that for Amherst is about two, 1.25 million um, or so, I think. Um, oh, it's 1.55 million and, and Amherst share would be about 1.25 million. Um, so, so shouldn't, I guess the question would be, wouldn't the fair share for the other towns be if you base CPA requests on the capital done adding in our already granted CPA into total CPA requests um, and then figuring out what the fair share would be. Um, but in doing so, given what Amherst has said, wouldn't it be wise to go to the three towns, other three towns for their CPA requests first and see what happens there um, before coming back to Amherst for CPA as we sort of think about what we are going to recommend to the council in terms of actions. Um, so I hadn't really thought about the, the sort of fairness question to be perfectly honest doing the math while we're in the meeting here. So forgive me for that. But yeah, I, I see your point. And I think that um, while to Bernie's uh, notion that, you know, that those three community CPA committees can convene a meeting at any time with 48 hours notice and, and call a town meeting within a couple of weeks, um, I wouldn't want to count on that. Um, which means if we were going to go to those CPA committees first for an answer, we're going to delay the project here because they're likely to take it up. I, I just wouldn't want to presume that they're going to meet earlier than that and then potentially vote on actual uh, uh, authorization in a, in a special meeting um, in order to meet a, uh, a bidding time frame of, of this winter. So I think that that likely, if they, if they were to take that conversation up, it's likely going to be at their next Springtown meeting uh, which means funding is available in July of 2025. Um, uh, so I think that 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 if if the the ask of the Amherst you know CPA is going to be dependent upon the other four the other three towns committing funds, it's gonna it's gonna delay the project a year, pretty much guaranteed. Just because I wouldn't want to count on those other three towns connecting in and making that um, commitment ahead of their usual no. schedule. Don't all the other three towns hold fall special town meetings? They do not. They do not. Pelham really does. Um, Shootsbury did a January one because they had uh, PFAS in their drinking water a year ago, um, but most of the time they don't. Uh, Dave, did you want to jump in? I'm not sure, Bob, whether I do or not. Um, <laughs> no, I'm just, yeah, I'm, I'm sure we're all trying to get get to a place here where we're all comfortable with the finances, but also with the urgency of the project. I guess, you know, I, I just, I guess I'm trying to, to, to urge us all to figure out a way to not delay the design I feel like we can design for a uh, for option 3C. I think the design team can deal with the 750. Um, I'm very concerned about motions and orders that might link or make votes of the other three towns, you know, their their CPA votes, the, you know, or make the vote of the council contingent upon the CPA picking up, you know, the full 20%, you know, I think Mandy, you mentioned 350,000 or I, I, 
I didn't do the math with you on that, but I'm I'm very concerned that we that these votes not be linked directly to that because I share Doug's um, his concern about whether they can do that in time or whether they will do it at all. Um, I think we have to be realistic. What can those three towns contribute um, realistically? So I'm I'm kind of urging us to to really support 3C, support the 4.2 million dollar project. Let the design team figure out the details of what those alts will be, um, and make motions and move forward, giving town staff and the design team and the school committee enough flexibility to 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 get to bidding this. And if we have to do it in phases, then we do. But I I'm really concerned about making you know, holding the, the design process up and the bidding process up based on the CPA votes. I think we can still have a very good project if we take out those elements, roughly $700,000, $750,000, we can still get to 3C and take those out and do those in a future period. This is not like taking the walls or the roof or, you know, whatever, you know, not having lights for a year, in my estimation, is not the end of the world. Um, you know, uh, not redoing the sidewalks on Mattoon Street is not the end of the project. That can be phased in over time. So I just, I guess I'm urging us to get to yes to 3C and then let let us all collectively figure out how to, to bridge that gap of 750. Thanks. Uh, <clears throat> Jennifer? Thank you. Um, thank you for allowing me in as a panelist. I wanted to explain and clarify just on the topic of quorum, which is that the Amherst School Committee is a five member elected body that oversees the three elementary schools. Those three schools are, mun are a municipal school district. The Amherst School Committee is a municipal school committee. That five member body doesn't have any purview over this project. So the fact that there's a quorum of that committee talking about this project is not an issue. The Track and field project is overseen by the regional school committee, which as you all know, is those five members from Amherst plus four members from other towns, and that has a quorum of five. So even if Sarah, Deb, Irv, and I were all here, that would not be a quorum of the regional school committee. I say that because I wanna encourage my colleague, Deb Leonard, to say what you wanted to say and not have to retract your statement or, or take back your statement from before and just say whatever it is that you wanted to say earlier. Thank you. Thanks. Well, Deb. <laughs> right then, thank you. Um, I hear people's wariness. I understand the nature of the region. I've, I, I, we've been butting up against it in so many different ways. Um, and it's really hard to be perfectly honest because when you walk through those schools, you see students, you don't see Pelham students. You don't see, you just see students. Um, and you see athletes who haven't been able to compete, state level athletes that have not been able to compete and are do devoting time and energy to advocate for their future teammates, not even people, not even people that they know. And, and I get that we're all, we're all supporters. And I, I, I really just don't understand limited resources. I understand the project's been delayed. I understand lots of things, but I also feel like this committee works pretty well together. I haven't been on any other committee, so I don't really know, but I I, I have been in the wings for some of them and, and, and seen more discord. I feel like we trust each other. I feel like we listen to each other. I feel like if there's a path forward for advocacy for our athletes and for students, my colleagues, our colleagues will do that. So I just, just want to say, maybe I'm overly optimistic, but maybe that's why there's new people on the school committee who are ready to, a friend of mine once said, life is not a marathon or a sprint, it's a relay race. And that's kind of what encouraged me to step in and think I can take a heat. I can run a heat for the kids. And that's what I'm trying to do. And so I'm just going to say, 
what Dave said, and thank you all for finding a path forward to a much better facility for all of our kids and for the towns who will be using this. Um, I was in the wings once. I was watching East Longmeadow delay a, a period of boys lacrosse. So it lasted like three times as long because our, um, our athletes were shooting into the setting sun. I mean, it's a real thing. It took three times as long. They just kept calling all of these really obviously annoying ways of, of winning the game, which they were going to anyway. <sighs> so thank you, please. And I will do whatever I can to make this work. And I do trust the people I'm working with. And then just one last thing is that Victoria Dawson likes to remind us that these facilities are a path forward to many students' higher education. So sooner is better than later. Thank you very much. Thank you. Kathy? Uh, just two, two things. One, again, it's just double checking math. 4.23 million minus 3.36 million is 870,000. That's the difference between the two in, in, in terms of what we have from SLR, not seven. So I just, whatever it is um, on, I know these estimates are not as precise. And if we pull some things out, um, I do not I do not agree with what Mandy said. And so we will have to take a vote in finance that the only option we would support is reorientation. Um, I think option two, the middle one, gets us uh, a long way there. And I hear what everyone's saying about reorientation, but I would not want to close the door on moving forward because I think it's essential. We have a track and we have a field, um, which we don't have now. I also have never understood with Amherst College, Hampshire College, UMass, why we can't be playing some of our meets on fields. This town is rich with fields. Um, we don't negotiate hard with it. But I just want to make sure that we know what the gap is, because when I went through quickly the option three on things I could take out, I was mentally thinking 700, but it's a bit more. And there may easily be, um, as, as you add in the sidewalks, there may be enough that can be a phase two without hurting it. So I'm not disputing that. I'm fine. I have nothing against reoriented. I just want to make sure that if we phase it, everyone has confidence um, and the money will be there because I wouldn't want to not bid this. I think the schedule is right for going out and bidding it. And Dave, when you said you design it and then you hope for the best, if we're designing it for reorientation, that's the design. Changing that is a, a major change. So they need to know that's what they're designing for because it has to do with the drainage system. It has to do with everything. Designing it with lights coming later is fine. Designing it with a sidewalk coming later is fine. Um, the sidewalk with, uh, they talked about a double shot put versus a, a next shot put, you know, some of the smaller items. Um, those are easy to add later, but the basic design, that decision is what um, with SLR and the schools, what you're gonna have to, and I, for one, I want this to go out to bid on the schedule that you've got. So anyway, the town, towns can figure out how to do that. But I'm not with Mandy that it's a, a bottom line. If you don't do this, our money's not available. I'm not willing, and I have no idea how the other council will vote or how the rest of the people on finance will vote. But I just want to say, I wouldn't, I will not want to put that condition in. I want to see the, the the project move forward. Thanks, Bernie. Uh, thank you. I, I think Dave has given us a perfectly reasonable path forward. Um, let's go ahead. Uh, it's going to put some uh, pressure on, on Kevin and his team. But let's go ahead. Let's say, you know, we, we uh, agree with the general aspects of this design that we're going to try to take an approach where we do a series of add-ons. It's not uncommon in, in public projects or any project to do that. Um, 
we as a finance committee will not support the use of free cash. However, we're open to uh, an application to the uh, CPA. Uh, so let's go forward with it. That gives Doug and his team, um, like I said, 90 to 120 days to uh, 90 days. Let's shorten it up a little bit to go to the other towns and say, this is what we're doing. Here's the design. This is what we've got. This is if you give us extra money. This is where we can go. We can add these increments in and we'll move forward. And you'll have, you know, we'll have funding in place by October, uh, sufficient time to go out and, and uh, double check the bids and advertise it so the project can finally come forward. Uh, I, I think, you know, we really do have to keep moving. And I wasn't, when I was suggesting that the other towns need to ante up, I wasn't suggesting we delay the project until they do. I think we need to go forward with it. Uh, you know, as an administrator, there were times when I had to say, you know, the town I'm running is going to put up some extra money because it's goodwill. Uh, and this may be that situation, but we have to go back reasonably back to the other three communities and say, Here's a chance to prove um, that you're committed to the project and here's a chance to help out. So that's it. Thanks. Councilor Walker. Um, thank you. So um, sort of along the lines of what Bernie just said, I think it makes sense to keep moving forward. And I think that Deb really put it very clear for us. And I, I I like that she said she really, you know, highlighted this, that this is a path for a lot of youth to reach and access higher education. Um, and we're already going to, you know, there's already going to be a period of time where we'll be under construction um, and the track won't be usable. And so I think moving forward without unnecessary delays is important here. Um, I would love to see us go for uh, option 3C um, and just give the track everything that it needs because again I see it as an investment in our future something that we can use more long term um, whether or not we have to phase or add things as alternatives so that we can go out to bid more quickly I think that that is definitely something to consider and something that could be helpful um, what I'm wondering and I'm hoping that other finance committee members might be willing to quickly weigh in on is I'm wondering about everyone's position on the removal of restrictions, um, because I think that's something that we haven't specifically talked too much about. I know Mandy Jo said that she wouldn't be in favor of some of those, and I would also be curious to hear why, um, specifically from Mandy Jo, but from other counselors as well, because I think that that is a piece to how we move this forward. Um, and so, again, I would love to hear what other committee members think on that, and I would love to take a vote on some of these things. Yeah, I think we need to vote soon, but let's get comments. So the last few comments, uh, Matt, uh, Councillor Haneke and Sarah. Matt? Matt, are you there? You may have stepped away. Okay, so uh, Councillor Haneke? I was gonna start making motions. Okay, well, let's, Sarah, did you want to just make a comment? Yeah, I just wanted to, because I feel like maybe my my concern was uh, um, heard more strongly than it was meant. I'm, don't, I mean, I'm thrilled to think that we may get to 3C through CPA funding. That's wonderful. But if that's the way you want us to proceed, I'd ask this committee to do everything it can with CPA, with CPAC and with the entire council to get, you know, get that additional funding locked in. Because as someone else said, we can't just turn the design documents 90 degrees and say, well, we didn't have enough money, just, just do it over here. So just the sooner that can all happen, the more confidence we have that we're spending money for, on a design that we can actually um, uh, build and according to the schedule we all want. That's all, thank you. Thank you. Matt, are you there? 
he may have had to step away. Andy? Yeah, I just wanted to add one thing, and that is a thank you to the CPA committee and to Sam, the, um, their willingness to um, welcome additional requests and to do it in the most expeditious manner that they can possibly do, do with the cooperation of others. And I think that uh, um, we really owe great debt to um, Sam and the CPA committee because I think they make a path possible. And with that said, I want to turn it back over to Mandy as quickly as possible so we can get our motions uh, going and see if we have a resolution. Okay, uh, Sam, did you want to say something? Yeah, you're on mute, Sam. Thank you, Andy. My personal opinions that I've professed are just mine. Uh, the committee has voted to welcome the application, so your statement's correct, and I'm quite hopeful. So thank you. That okay, thank you, Sam. Uh, yeah. Councilor Haneke, let's let's go. <laughs> so there's four. I'm I, I'm going to try and word them in ways, even though I might not. I might vote against my own motions, but um, <laughs> I'm just going to try and word some of them. I'm in sorry the to interrupt. Way. I'm sorry to interrupt, Mandy. Irv um, emailed saying that he wanted to speak, and I'm trying to promote him back to a panelist. And um, he's declining. Irv, you're, you're, Irv, you're, you're... Irv, did you want to talk? Did you want to speak? You're on mute. To a point of order, and that is, uh, is it, if it's five, that is a quorum of the uh, to the council for the regional committee. Is there a problem to have five people in the uh, room? I think there are only four. No. Jennifer, Deb, Irv, and me. Um, Irv, you're unmuted. Yes, I am. Go ahead, Irv, you, if you wanted to speak, please. No, I, I mean, what I wanted to say, uh, um, uh, I'm, I'm, I, I, everything I wanted to say, everyone else has said it. I am grateful that there is this seeming motion, a uh, movement, uh, to do this full project, which is much needed. I also think that uh, what Dave said uh, in terms of uh, doing the full project and bidding the full project, I agree with that. You know, I, I am also mindful of that when you do bid the whole project, you, and if you come back and make changes and that those change orders cost money. So, so I'm aware of that, but I, but I do agree, but that's a, a very good way to go. Uh, obviously the conundrums of how the school committee and the council deals with it in relationship to CPAC uh, is, is, is a whole other matter. But I believe that there are ways forward that we can work our way through this. Um, and, and, and so I think that everything that was said, and I really appreciate Mandy for pointing out all of those conundrums and uh, traps that could get us uh, trapped in terms of how we go about funding this. But there seems to be a very clear will, will to do this, A and B. There is a very clear pathway forward that I think that this school committee can take its direction from what is happening here and, and also look forward to a really positive vote from this, this committee. And thank you. Thank you, Irv. Matt, are you uh, available? Seems to be muted. Uh, okay, uh, Councilor Haneke. Okay, I'm gonna start with what is probably the easiest one. Um, I'm hoped to recommend 
the the council adopt the CPA recommendation to remove the artificial turf requirement restriction affiliated with financial order 23-08A, the original 800,000 CPA award from June 2nd, 2022 for the Amherst Regional High School track and field renovation project. Is there a second? Second. Uh, any uh, any discussion? I think we've discussed this to death. <laughs> uh, so uh, let's start a vote. Uh, I'll start. Uh, I vote aye. Andy? Aye. Kathy? Yes. Bernie? Support. Uh, Councilor Walker? Yes. Councilor Haneke? Aye. Matt, are you there? I think Matt has stepped away. Okay, so uh, it's uh, unanimous with one absent. Okay, the second one, the next two relate to each other, um, but I'll, I'll make this one and I'll, um, even though I'm gonna vote against it, but um, <laughs> I'll make it the way I, I don't know which way to go, but um, I move to recommend the council adopt, approve the CPA, motion to rescind the restriction on the north-south orientation on financial order 23-08A, comma, with the strong recommendation to pursue the north-south option and encourage the school district to return to CPA for additional funds to meet that north-south objective as soon as possible as needed. Is there a second? I think I second it. <laughs> it, so, was, it was. It was. It might have been four lines long. Andy, I, but motion. Sorry for the length. I'll explain. I, I'm reading basically the CPA motions by word. Um, mm -hmm. I, even though I don't actually support this one, and I don't support the first part of it. Um, so I'm going to vote not to recommend this. Um, but this is how the CPA actually worded its motion to rescind. So I thought we'd follow its motion to rescind in our motion. Um, I don't think it's wise to remove the north-south orientation and give the school committee, since they are the only ones that have the ability to make the decision, I don't think it's a wise to remove that orientation when we really want that orientation because they can then spend that money on a track that is not reoriented. And I don't I, I'm not going to support that, so I'm going to vote against the motion I just made, but I, I don't know what the committee will do, and I figured I'd make the motion as sort of a motion to recommend what the CPA did, but I don't I, I don't think it's wise to say, we want North-South, but we're going to remove the restriction on spending this money on North-South, so I'm going to vote against it. <laughs> uh, Athena, did you have any? Um, Mandy, your motion echoed the, the CPAC motion, but it was to and encourage the the regional schools to return to CPAC, not the town. CPAC motion yes. was encourage was the, the town. town. Your motion was the to town, yes, but the town can't come back to CPAC, right? Because I we was don't right. Away. I was just pointing no, out oh, that, that there was a oh, difference yes. and confirming that that was your intent. Thanks. It was my intent because I believe it's the school district that needs oh. to apply for that money, not the town. Understood. Thanks. Okay, uh, Castle Walker. A comment? No. Nope. All right. So uh, why don't we vote? Um, I'm I so sorry. I thought I was unmuted, but I was not. Okay. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so I, I completely understand Mandy's concern, um, but I just also wanted to bring forward my perspective because it was a little bit different um, in that I think we've made it very clear like, I don't think removing the restriction will send the message that we are not in favor of the the reorientation. I think we've made that very clear with this conversation and that there are, uh, we, they have representatives here. And I think people are listening and will listen to what we say. Um, and I also think it's really clear in the long wording that we are in support of, that CPA is in support of. And I think the school committee themselves were in support of reorientation, just worried about being able to get the funding and and so i don't think that there is a real concern that they won't seriously pursue trying 
to move to option C3. Um, so I just am in support of in this of this motion and I just wanted to vocalize that. Bernie? I, I'd like to echo what Councillor Walker said and add to that that I know that the CPA committee uh, engaged in an extensive and careful discussion of this. And I really don't at this point see any reason to second guess them. Okay. Well, let's vote then. Um, I'm going to vote uh, aye, Andy. Aye. Mandy, uh, Councillor Haneke? No. Kathy? Yes. Uh, uh, Councillor Walker? Yes. Bernie? Support. And Matt, Matt, are you st still like, gone? Okay, I don't see Matt. All right, I think it's uh, one, uh, what is it? Three, four, four in favor, one opposed, and one support. Excuse me, Bob, did you vote? I just didn't. Oh, did I? Did, I don't yeah, think I did. Vote. I, I voted I. Yes. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's okay. It's been a long, it's been a long meeting. <laughs> uh, Councilor Haneke. I'm going to do the same thing with the strange vote outcome um, for the next motion. <laughs> um, I move to recommend that council remove the res the north where is it um the restriction the north south orientation restriction on financial appropriation and transfer order fy 23-05a i think that's all i think that's all yep yeah. Can I just say, Mandy, that is the free cash? That's the free cash 900,000 order. Yeah. Is there a second? Shane seconds. Okay. Any other discussion? So I'm just going to say the same thing. I'm voting against it because I don't think we should remove a restriction when we really want that project to happen. So. Understood. Okay. So what's uh, Andy? Yeah, I... Uh agree with uh, Mandy on this one. In the last motion, I felt like we owed it to the CPA committee to respect their judgment on CPA, but uh, I think I'm going to be voting no on this for the same reason that Mandy has stated. Okay. Uh, so no other comments. Um, I'm going to vote no. Andy? No. Uh, Councillor Haneke? No. Kathy? Yes. Uh, Councilor Walker? Yes. Uh, Bernie? Opposed. All right, so it's two yes, three no, and one opposed. So this one does not pass. And and, and I just, Bob, I request when we, when we send this, our report on this to the council, what I'd like to say is I don't want to hamstring this process um, by saying it can only be the, this is which um, so I wanted to leave flexibility the way uh, the other one does. So I just want to make sure ra rationale for um, why the yes is and the no's is they clearly people want to restrict the use of our free cash. So I, I just would like it written up that way so the council understands there were a different point of view. Yep. Uh, Councilor Haneke? One final motion. Um, I move to recommend that the council not adopt approval, appropriation, and transfer order FY 24-03B, an order that would, well, an order approving the town of Amherst gift to Amherst Pelham Regional School District $756,160,000 for the high school track and field project for a north-south oriented design option 3C, comma, <laughs> and the council strongly recommend the school committee to pursue a north-south option through 
CPAC funding from the four towns. Shane instead. seconds. Shane seconds. Any other discussion? So I, I'm just going to try and summarize what I was doing, that we're not recommending the approval and transfer order that would use free cash. And instead, we're saying go after CPA money for the additional funds needed for north-south orientation. Right. Um, and part of that is if we approve this, we cannot use any CPA funds for that because it would it, those funds would supplant this funding. And so we at this point, we can't approve it if we even want CPA attempted to be used. Right. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Councillor Walker. I'm sorry, just a clarifying question. And I think it's just the double negative that's confusing me because Mandy Joe, you said if we do vote for this, then we cannot use CPA funding, but I thought we were saying not. No. So, sorry. The, the motion I made was to not approve the order and recommend they go after CPA. And the reasoning behind making that motion is because if we recommended approving the order, we would prohibit, and then that passed, we would prohibit, the the school would be prohibited from asking for CPA funds. Okay, so a yes vote though is to vote no to the order. No to the order with a request to pursue CPA funds. Okay, thank you. And the order would use free cash is yes. what this order is. It's it's a, we're saying no to the use of free, free cash. Correct. With a here's where go here's where to look for the money, <laughs> yeah, okay, okay. Uh, any other discussion? Okay, I'll start the voting. I vote aye. Andy, aye. Uh, Ma Mandy Joe or uh, Councilor Haneke, aye. Kathy, yes. Councilor Walker, yes. Bernie, support. Matt, are you there? No. Nope. No, Matt. Okay, so again, it's it's unanimous with one absent. Uh, I, I I there's two. I have two comments to make. One is one comment is I, I think it'd be very important if we can get a um, if in the design of the the north south orientation we can figure out how to stay within the available dollars in terms of the project that we tee up to bid. And then as we get other funding sources, we can add in the, the rest of it, you know? So, so if we could phase it that way, I, I don't think anyone was saying we shouldn't do any of the project. It's a question of how we phase it so that we don't over, we don't get into, you know, um, promising before we have the money. Um, so I, I, if we could find a kind of find a way to design it so that the bid can be for that, that we have money, that those aspects we have money for without screwing things up, you know, that may not be feasible to get it all done, but if we can get it close, close enough, then I think we, we've, we've succeeded. That's one, one thing. One other comment I have and this is a, a request really to, to Doug. I don't know if he's still here, uh, but uh, maybe the school committee can, can echo this. I think the, I'm concerned about long-term maintenance of, of the grass fields. And I, I think maybe that might be something to consider for the boosters to set up you know, some sort of way to fund the, that. Uh, that seems to be something we could go back to the boosters to ask if they could fund the maintenance of these fields because, you know, the, the, the towns are going to invest a lot of money in make, you know, creating these fields. And it would be, um, I, I just worry that between the, the regional school budget and the, and the DPW budget and all that, that we won't have the right equipment and the right uh, staff to, to, maintain these fields the way they need to be maintained. So that was just a comment I had. Uh, Sarah, did you? I just, to... I just want to thank you all very much for your, your careful thought about this and your, and, and I'm really excited to see such support for um, 
reorienting the track. And we'll make sure Doug gets that um, suggestion, which I think is a great one. Kathy? Um, I just, I just want to make it perfectly clear when we write this up that the 900000 in free cash that we approved a few years ago is still in the pot. That the only thing we did just now was say, don't go for another 750 or 850, whatever that number is. Correct? You know, so that the, the basic... Okay, so we just need to make that really clear that we're we're retaining that, we're retaining the CPA Amherst money and all those other little pieces, they're really little, the other pieces Doug has shown us in the table. And, you know, to not convey in any way that we're jeopardizing that initial 900,000, that that's sitting there. So I just wanna make sure when we write up Mandy's quite complicated set of motions, that there's some wording in the beginning that says, the school committee still has, and it's, you know, this much from this source and this much from this source and this much from this source, but we're not supporting using Amherst free cash for the rest of it. Um, so we give, we give a lay person's uh, set of write-ups to what we just did as to the extent we can be extremely clear, it would be helpful. Okay. Thank you. Jennifer. Thanks. I, I guess I'm, I, I just have a, I, I'm just have, I just have a question. I, it, based on what Kathy just said, it seems to me that by keeping the restriction on the free cash, then we're sort of doomed to 1B unless we can find another $1 million. And 1B is the, is the project that seems like nobody wants. Am I, am I understanding that correctly? That is the reason I voted against the way Mandy worded okay, it. So I, I, I understand it correctly. Thank you. Yeah, no, because the wording now on free cash says we only want three. That the money's not available if it's not reoriented. I, I voted against it, and that's why I want to make sure when we report it up, the re Mandy's saying don't, don't remove it. Uh, the the vote against, the vote against removing it um, meant that we are saying only one option because it can't be used in the cheapest option and it can't be used in number two. It can only be used for three. So just so everyone understand what they vote, and I want council to really understand that that is the implication here. That's right. And it's the council that will decide. So we're just making a recommendation. Um, well, I think we're all worn out. <laughs> um, so I I had a um, a draft report from our previous meeting um, where we approved the setting of a the water and sewer rates and the um, optional tax exemptions. Do, do we want to? Let Matt is saying goodbye, Bob. <laughs> okay. I mean, um, Sam is saying goodbye. Sam is saying goodbye. Okay, thank you, Sam. I appreciate it. Thank I just... you, Bob, and thank you all. And uh, let's keep it going. All right. Um, so I think I'll say goodbye as well. Thank you very, very much. Okay, it was a very, very good discussion and, and good outcome, I think. Thank you all. So I thought what I'd do is just try to add these, uh, this uh, recommendation or this, uh, this, these orders uh, that we recommended or didn't fail to recommend uh, to this to this uh, report. And then it really needs to get to the council by the next meeting. So I will circulate this if people can, you know, indicate whether they approve it, um, you know, as is, or whether they want to mark it up, that's fine. Uh, I just want to send a report in that, that um, so that we communicate with the council what we recommended or fail to recommend. Is that okay with everybody? All right. Um, and Athena, I'm gonna need your help in uh, <laughs> writing down uh, what Mandy uh, wrote, because uh, what she, orders she has, because I, I couldn't follow everything. I couldn't scribble fast enough, so. Mandy can send them to you too, Bob. She, yeah, she if you them. have them, Mandy, that would be great. All right. Well, uh, thanks, everybody. It was a good meeting, and it, I'm sorry it took so long. Um, 
Do I, is there a motion to adjourn? I have, I have just a comment first, Bob. Um, I wrote up, um, I know we were, we had tried to get to reparations today and we did not. Um, I have a memo to us on thoughts on what's been proposed on reparations. So um, what I'll try to do whenever we reschedule that for is try to speak to it really quickly, you know, because I think it would be good to have a full discussion on that. And I'm, I'm not allowed to submit my thoughts to the group until we meet. So I just wanted people to know, I went through some of the questions in front of us and wrote up thoughts on each of them um, in terms of what the finance committee is being asked to consider on reparations. So that was on the agenda, but um, it, it, there's no way of, I guess, you know, what I've been told before is I can't share them until I speak to them. So I will speak to them when we come back together again. Yeah, well, I'll, we'll try to, I'll try to schedule a meeting soon. Uh, I don't know what the, the schedule is. Uh, I'll talk to Lynn about, about, you know, when the council needs to make a recommendation or, or a decision on this. Um, but um, I, I think, I think it's, I just wanted to get this today was not to, supposed to be a decision making it was just a, a discussion so yeah and no and i think we need a discussion and then we need another meeting to make it a recommendation so i just think that the discussion should be a discussion rather than just a presentation we I agree. We, we have the report we had a long discussion on this last fall you know with raising questions but we need to come back so it was the only thing is just to alert everybody that if they don't i think everyone was here for that, um, you know, in terms of committee and heard it. So there was a lot and Andy's report probably captures some of that from when we had our discussion. So. Okay. Councilor Walker. Um, yeah, I just wanted to, and I'm sure that you would do this, but I just wanted to be, to request that we be in communication with the representatives that we had because we had some representatives from the reparations committee waiting in the audience this entire meeting. Um, and so I would hate to just say, hey, we'll get you on another agenda sometime. Um, I think we should try to put them on our next agenda if that's possible um, and try to communicate that to them as soon as possible and maybe even possibly start with that um, just to make sure that we're moving forward with that and just to be respectful of their time since they just sat through a two hour meeting and did not get to speak. I agree. And I do apologize uh, to the members of the com committee because I didn't anticipate we'd spend so much time <laughs> on the track and field. And I did try to add it in. We tried to get it um, as soon as we, this came up uh, very late. It came up last week. And so I tried to get it into this meeting uh, just so you know, uh, uh, Councillor Walker, I tried my best to get it into this meeting, but it just didn't work out. Sorry about that. Uh, Councillor Hanke? Um, Just a, a scheduling question. I have a tentative meeting scheduled for this Friday. Are we hap Is that happening or are we not holding that meeting? Um, I, we could hold that meeting if it's okay with people. I mean, I, I had it on my calendar too. We had it, I think it was a we, we put it there in case we needed it. Um, do people want to meet to discuss the reparations? On I, would, I would prefer not. Okay. I, I would prefer to take a break because we've had how many yes. weeks in our <laughs> meetings, um, but I was just trying to confirm so I can know what to do with my schedule. Um, okay. All right. There. Well, I, okay. We'll, we'll take a break because, you know, believe me, everyone can use a break, but um Councilor Walker, if you could, if you could um, propose, you know, or, or I'll talk to Michelle, um, see if what 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 works for for the uh, the committee, um, and uh, we'll see when we can reschedule the reparations discussion. We do have a. It is on my calendar, or at least I just have finance on the 18th, so next a week from today. So um, I don't know what else is on that meeting, but. Um, going back to regular finance on two, Tuesday at two would be great. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yep. Just pointing out that the committee has 
meetings on the 18th and 25th, and then you'll go back to two meetings a month after June. Okay. So we'll we'll try to we'll try to reschedule it for the 18th then. But I'll I'll talk to Michelle and make sure that uh, she's she's available then. Okay, is there a motion to I make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All right. Um I'll vote aye. Andy? Aye. Uh Council Haneke? Aye. Kathy? Yes. Bernie? Bye, everybody. I vote yes. Uh, Councilor Walker? Yes. All right. We're adjourned. At oh, I supported too, Bob. <laughs> oh, Matt. He's back. <laughs> oh, he, comes, he, he comes back for the very end. <laughs> Sorry, I had to step away there. I apologize. No problem. Okay. Thanks, everybody. And uh, it was a long but a very good meeting. Thank you. Thanks, Bob. Bye.